Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're going to try this again. We tried it the other day in my son's room, and then he got busy. But um, today he has a uh, a little time uh, for himself. And uh, right now he's um, eating, grubbing, and uh, doing his thing. And you got Emily here, my baby girl. She's um, she's uh, chilling. Want to say hello, Dan? Want to say hey? <laughs> Facebook. Hi. Nana, Mama, Nana, all them. Everybody watching. All right. Want to want to tell everybody, tell the people something. You feeling better? You doing better? Yeah. You want to say anything? That's it. Yeah. Oh, you camera shy? I ain't never know. You my son? You camera shy? camera Okay, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, okay. I'm to eat. Okay, go ahead and eat then, my brother. Go ahead and eat, my son. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, you hear my old son, yeah. You know, I always say he's doing good, and he, he, he is. I'm always speaking faith. And, uh, you know, faith is uh, what we need. Uh, April says she loves you, Daniel. Um, I'm always talking faith because uh, what I'm doing, I'm planting seeds. It's a mindset. It's a behavior. And the more you talk about faith and the more you think about faith, the more you're going to respond from faith. And faith is simply uh, simply God's word, simply believing in God. And so that's why I'm constantly talking about faith. You know, the Bible says if you don't have faith, you can't even please God. If you don't have faith. Because the Bible says that our mind, our natural mind, our corner mind, is an enemy to God. It's an enemy that's a constant fight because anything in, in your, your mind or your flesh, it doesn't want to please God. And so that's why I talk faith because there are so many people and it's natural. It's a natural thing to doubt. It's a natural thing to look at circumstances and it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to fight to have faith. That's what the Bible tells us to fight that, the good fight of faith because there's always going to be doubt and fear to come in. Even in what my son said to a Waitian, there are people that are afraid. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've, I was afraid. I mean, in a sense of naturally so, but I ignore that, and I know what God is saying. I know what God is doing. I'm watching the progression of Him, and briefly, if I can, even uh, with my son Daniel, I want to encourage someone who has a deadline. You have a deadline, and the deadline is getting becoming closer, and. You don't, you're not no closer to your answer than you were from the beginning. You have a deadline, and you, some of you, you have a deadline that you might could even be evicted. And the day, as the days approach, you're trying everything you know how to do, um, but you become fearful and afraid and nervous because you feel like in your mind you're about to be put out. You're about to be put out. And whatever your deadline is, you're afraid because it seems like God has forgotten about you. But see, sometimes when it seems like God has forgotten about you, sometimes God hides himself. And the reason why God hides himself is because he wants to teach you faith. He wants you to trust in him. And so it's hard, you know, as people, because especially as men, because we like to fix everything. You know, we are fixers. We like to correct, fix, make sure everything is okay. And so even for me, uh, what God will do, God will take it, take it and put me or put people in a situation where they can't fix it. You can't figure it out. You can't go to the internet and try to find the answer or go to your past or nothing, nothing like that. But at that place, when God hides himself, he's taking away the training wheels where he wants you to completely, continuously trust in him. Where you're not going to get no confirmation. Nobody's going to come to encourage you to make you feel better. Uh, you just have to totally depend on God. And at that place where you have to totally depend on God, there ain't going to be no feeling. And see, that's what God is teaching many of us and many people in the church, that he's not just a feeling. You know, he's a fact. He's the word. And your weapon is your word. It's the word of God. That's why I've been talking about faith, because faith, faith comes from the word. And the more words you have, and see, because faith is being in a relationship, just like with a man and a woman. If you're in a relationship, the more you're in that relationship, you get faith. Your faith grows. And also, you learn how to trust that person because you can't have faith in someone if you don't believe in them and you don't trust them. The same thing with God. 
He's teaching us and he's teaching me. He's stretching my faith. That's what he's doing. He's stretching Daniel's faith. That's what he's doing. He's raising up and he's developing and he's uh, causing a great testimony to come out of this situation where God, where God is going to show everyone who he is and what he can do. That's what God is doing. He's stretching our faith, but the process never feels good. But let's get back to this deadline. The deadline. You have a deadline. There was a man in the Bible, Nehemiah. He had a deadline because he had went to the king and looking at saw that uh, the, the walls of Jerusalem was torn down and the gates were burned. And so he had a heart to rebuild the house of God. He wanted to rebuild it, so he went to the king. King thought he was sad for some kind of reason. He was afraid, but said, no, I'm just sad because, you know, uh, it's in my heart uh, to rebuild uh, God's house, God's walls, because they've been torn down. I know we sinned. Uh, we messed up, but I want to build it back. And so the king gave him a deadline, 52 days. And when he be began to work and rebuild what, uh, what was in his heart, there was, these, there was these men called Sambalit and Tobiah, and their purpose was to not make him work or get him to come down from building the wall. They became angry when they heard it. And they even told him that if the fox, if, if a, uh, was it, is a fox run up, it, that wall is going to fall. It's weak. See, I know, you know, at times, you know, you feel like you're weak. See, some of you feel like you're weak when you're in your pressure, and you're in the pressure of what you're facing, you're on this deadline, and you're looking at the time, you're looking at God, you're looking at your bank account, you're looking at your situation, and still nothing has happened. And sometimes you wonder, has God forsaken you? What you need, baby? Has God forgotten about you? God didn't forget about you. He's just hiding himself from you because he wants you to trust in him. See, because what's in you is your answer. What's in you is your strength. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. That joy comes within from the wells of salvation. I get that. <laughs> so God wants you to look within. He don't want you to trust in numbers. He don't want you to trust in man. He don't want you to trust in things of this world. But he wants you to trust in him. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And what makes one just? Just what makes a person just? The Bible says... Uh, uh, Abraham faith because he didn't waver at his promise it was imputed unto him as righteousness just to be just to be righteous and it wasn't because of his 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 righteousness or what he did because the Bible said we're saved by grace through faith not of works but it was because of what God had did and because he trusted in God he didn't uh, he didn't toss or turn at the promise but he kept his eyes totally completely on God and because of that that made him righteous that made him just and because of that, he became righteous. And God rewarded him for his faithfulness through his test. Same thing. Many of you, there's things that you believe in God for. You believe in God for elevation. You believe in God for a new job. You believe in God for healing. You believe in God for family members to be saved. You believe in God for uh, uh, even revelation, a greater revelation, a greater uh, peace, wisdom, or whatever you believe in God for. Wait. Trust God. Trust God, stand still and see the salvation of God. That's by having trust and having faith and believing in him. Because the Bible said that, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in the beginning, a person must believe that God is. And then that he's is, he's a rewarder. In other words, there's a deadline, there's a destination. There's a destination with being with God. There he is. And that's by trusting in God. Regardless, I know it looks hard, I know it's difficult, but have faith, faith in him. See, Nehemiah had faith in God. He kept on building because he knew what was in his heart. Even though they tried to get him to come down, even they were at one time, they had um, uh, one weapon in one hand and a, a spatula in the other hand, still building but still watching. The Bible tells us to watch and pray. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Many of you, your mind doubts, doubt, disbelief, and all of that. It's trying to discourage you. It's trying to get you to stop building. It's trying to stop you to stop building your faith. Because when you're building your faith, you're building your confidence. You're building what God has told you to build. And so don't come down for nothing. Don't stop for nothing. No matter how you feel, no matter what somebody says. So what? Somebody don't believe. That don't matter. So about somebody don't trust you. So what? So what? Somebody, uh, they don't like you. So what? They didn't like Jesus. But keep building. Keep focused because there's a deadline. Don't worry about the time. Because the Bible said there's a time and season for everything and a time for every purpose. Your time is now. And that's your time is trusting in God and having faith. Because faith is going to see you through. Faith is. God is faith. God, and also with faith, faithfulness. Faithfulness is being consistent 
over a period of time, God wants you to be consistent. He wants you to remain faithful in your test. He wants you to remain faithful in your storm. I know you got a deadline. I know it's coming up. But don't look at don't look at it. Don't look don't look at your deadline, but look at God. Turn your back to your situation and turn to God and begin to praise God in in and while you're waiting on God to answer you. Where it feels like he's forsaken himself, keep praising him and keep praying to him. Because he knows yet it's a test. And this too will pass. And when you come out of it, you will have the victory. Do you hear me? You will have the victory. And so you might have a deadline. See, but don't get discouraged and don't get worried and don't become nervous because of your deadline. Because oftentimes when uh, we have pressure and there's things that, that we want to, that God to, uh, to do for us or if we have bills or we have something that we, we are trusting God for, we become nervous. We become uh, emotional. Don't let your emotions uh, block you or destroy or uh, cause you not to hear God's word. That's your weapon. Your weapon is God's word in every situation. God's word. Because everything is going down except the word of God. The Bible said, prophecy shall fail and tongues shall cease. But God's word will stand. You need that word in you. Because that word is going to still float. Because as my spiritual father will always say, and I'm getting ready to go, God will take you over the top before he'll let you go under. That's a sure word from God. He will take you over the top. Just like he did with Peter. He caused Peter to float on the water, walk on the water because he trusted. He listened at that word. The word said, come. And he began to come. It's the word. It's the word that's going to keep you. In every situation, it's the word. That's what I've always completely and continuously de depended on is the word. Because in the word, there's life. In the beginning, there was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Just like all it takes is one move. In any of your situations, all it takes is one word. That's all you need is one word. It might be bad right now, but just to get one word, all what you're feeling, it'll be over. Isn't that amazing? All you need is a word. One word, God can do it. And, and you know, and, and see, God, with man is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. All you need is a word. That's why, that's why you become intimate with the word. Trust his word. Huh? Don't, don't trust in the circumstances. Because the Bible said the just live by faith. You're righteous, you live by faith. Because even the Bible said that the world, the world was framed, put together by the word of God. And you can't see the word of God. You can't see God's word. You can't see God. You can read his word, but you can't see God. He created all of this. A spiritual being created all of this. You couldn't see it, but now it's here. That same one that created, trust in him. Because if you look in your life and you're at a situation where it seems insurmountable, just look and remember back what God did before. Did he do it before? He's the same God. Why are you doubting him? Can you trust him? Stop looking at people. Stop looking at what somebody else did and what they didn't do. That's not you. God has a purpose for you. And somebody told me something the other day, uh, and it was interesting, even concerning my son, Daniel. He said, you know what? God make special people for special people. In other words, when you're in a situation, and it's a special situation, and you're going through something that's so difficult, God already prepared you for it. God already gave you the victory. He's already gave you the grace. He's already gave you the authority. He's given it to you already. So why are you worried? Trust in him. I'm ready to go. Let me see. Let you see my baby boy again. Yo, Daniel. I ain't even put your diaper. That's Emily. <laughs> Can you do me a favor? Can you trust him? That's all I'm doing. I'm trusting him. I'm not looking at the circumstances. I'm not looking at what the doctor said because the doctor ain't God. I know what God said. And Daniel's a prophet. He's chosen. I know that. A couple of days ago, I said hey, I had a video three years ago when I prayed for my son. You know, I spoke into him as his father. I spoke life into him. And the thing about it, my voice is the loudest voice that he hear. It is because I've been consistent. Because he's my seed. And God says he's going to watch over his word and it's going to accomplish that which is going to accomplish it and it's not going to return to him void. And so I'm watching on my seed. As God watch over me, I'm watching on my son. As God protected me, I'm protecting my son. Can we trust him? Let's trust him. Let's not be uh, afraid. Let's not be worried. The Bible says, let not our heart be troubled. Don't be troubled. God got this. He's a way maker. He's a dividend. He's a multiple can. He's all those things. But it starts from trusting in him. Faith. Faith. 
Position it and posture yourself in faith because faith is the, God gives every man a measure of faith. But what makes your faith grow when it's under attack? Troubles come. Things come that you didn't expect. Things didn't come that you didn't anticipate. That's where your faith grows at. See, there's dead faith and there's lively faith. Lively faith means that it's, been, it's being attacked. You're using it. Dead faith means you don't do nothing at all. You just have doubt. Dead faith is, is just like being useless. But lively faith is faith that's growing, expanding. And the reason why God is expanding your faith because God got something large for you around the corner. As my spiritual father would say, down the road of peace. God bless you. Trust him. Have faith. Don't doubt. Don't fear. Don't fear. Trust. Can we do that? That's what's going to bring it out. That's what's going to bring your miracle. Faith. The Bible said, all through the Bible, Jesus said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. It was their faith. It was believing. It was when their mind was fasted and focused on him. Focused on deliverance. The woman had to your blood. Heard Jesus was in town. Pressed away. She said, no mind. If I could just touch him, it's gone. I'd be made whole. She said that. Her faith. Bless you.